Hello everybody, welcome back, nice to see you again. It is hot. Don't know if my flush complexion is giving it away for you, but yes, we're in the middle of a heat wave, if you didn't already know, here in the UK. Um, I've just come back from work and the car temperature was telling me it was 35 degrees outside. I'm currently sitting in my office and we're, well, I don't know if you can see that, but we're roughly around 33 degrees in here. That is hot. A lot of the forum posts you'll see on Facebook and various fishy places like that are people screaming for help because their fish tanks are getting too hot. So I thought we could take a quick look at that. So a lot of the chat on the forums and Facebook and groups and things like that is about how to cool your tanks. So I thought I'd take a look at some of those options, test them out and see what works and what doesn't work. I have a few personal favourites and we'll have a look at them and some of which are a bit stranger and some of which are downright daft. So, we'll use the pea puffer tank first, we'll use that as the baseline, so the room temperature, like I say, was 32, 33 degrees in here at the moment. We'll dip the thermometer in there and give it a minute or so, and we'll see what the tank is running at at the moment. Um, one of the first things I want to say is, you'll often hear the first bit of advice people will tell you is turn your heaters off. Fish tank heaters have thermostats in them. I mean, unless you've been running a tank for the last 40, 50 years and you have a heater that you've kept from that time, all heaters have thermostats in them now. So what that means is when it gets up to temperature, it switches off. So you don't need to go and switch it off. So leave your heaters alone. So ignore your heaters. Unless your heater is about 50 years old, it will have a thermostat in it. It will switch itself off when it gets too hot. Your heater isn't adding to the, the burden of your hot fish tank so there we go we're at about 27 28 degrees on that tank at the moment so that's with doing nothing so as you can see the windows open We've got a little bit of a breeze coming in here the blinds are up the first thing um, I would do is shut the blinds shut the curtains make sure there's no light shining in and directly and take the lid off the tank and let that air get at the surface so let's try that okay that's been about half an hour or so still hot still feels hot in here if i look at the ambient temperature in the room it's dropped to about 30 degrees if you can see that not sure if you can Which is still warm, still hot, still uh, disgusting, um, but cooling the room bodes well for cooling the tank, so let's see how it gets on in there. So I guess you could say that these are two things we've tried at once. Um, shutting the curtains, that would be one, and taking the lid off. The theory behind taking the lid off and exposing more of the water surface area is that you take advantage of some evaporation and evaporative cooling. Another one would be, you'll often hear, turn off the lights. I haven't even bothered with that one because these LED lights, they're so far away from the actual surface of the water and they wouldn't make a difference either way. Um, so we'll give this another minute or two in here and see if it's made any difference at all. While the pea puffers try and attack it. So that's dropped it to yeah, it's kind of 26 and a half, 27. Maybe if I'd left it for another hour or so, that might have had a bigger effect. But it's a start, it's a start. But another one will be people telling you to do a cold water change. Um, that is good. Um, I've done that dozens and dozens of times. I do it all the time, actually. I don't think that's actually a valid technique because what that'll do is it'll drop the temperature by a few degrees for about 10 minutes and then it will come straight back up to where it was. One step up from that is to kind of accelerate the evaporation and the evaporative properties and use a fan. So that is a fan, that thing right there. You could use a clip-on desktop fan or a pedal still fan or any kind of fan. Computer fans are pretty good at this as well, but the idea is you get some airflow over the surface of the water, which speeds up the evaporation, which intensifies the cooling. So I've just kind of jerry-rigged this up here on a little platform but it's a fan that will angle the air down there and blow it across 
and hopefully speed up the cooling. So let's give that a go. It's just a shame that the fan I've picked is extremely noisy. Right, let's turn that off. So I actually quite like this one because you don't really have to do anything. As long as your fan's got power, you can keep that going for a while and it will continue to work. Um, unlike the swapping out the cold water changes and stuff, which is just a temporary fix. So let's see how that one does and then we'll move on to the final one. Still hot, still hot in here. I can already imagine some of the people trying to comment on this going, but you didn't do this properly, it's not scientific. This is really just a look at all the various things that get suggested to see which ones have an effect. Obviously, if you keep the fan on for hours, it should continue to lower to a certain point, more than it would in half an hour. Um, this is just a quick look. So there, I think we've dropped I think we've dropped a degree there, if not half a degree to a degree in about 25 minutes. So that's pretty good. So let's get rid of this and we'll try the next one. So this one requires a bit of preparation and it's a bit labour intensive, but you get some water, fill up some bottles, stick them in the freezer. Ideally, get a bunch of them and then you can rotate them. But the whole premise here is you just plop these in the tank. And you've effectively got a big ice cube. I like to go for the smaller bottles because I think they work better. So I'll plop a couple of them in there. And you've got a few floating ice cubes. So it's best if you can place the bottle somewhere where there's a decent flow so as you get some uh, water flowing past it and it spreads it around and evenly distributes it. Um, this one actually works quite fast so within a few minutes normally you can see uh, it's starting to have an effect. But what happens is, usually within half an hour, an hour, depending how big your water bottles are, um, they soon melt and you have to repeat the process. So you have to have quite the rotation going and have a freezer full of water bottles or even bags of ice cubes, all that sort of thing. Uh, just so you can keep them rotating in and out. So we'll give this, I don't know, we'll give everything half an hour just to see what it's like. A little bit over half an hour for these ones, but no longer ice, just water. Let's see how that's done. So I think the biggest takeaway from this is that if you combine all these techniques you'll probably get something that works for you. Um, like I said before, you need to have loads of bottles of water if you wanted to do this, but my, my theory is that this will actually have brought it down a couple of degrees. So what I tend to do is if I've been away at work or something and it's been a really hot day and I come home and the tanks are running a little bit hot, I'll bob in a couple of these ice bottles and then put the fan on top. They're kind of my two favourite things and that usually gets it down a couple of degrees quite quickly and then keeps it at a safe level. These pee puffers are determined to eat this thermometer. So I think we got down to 26 and a half ish, 27 with the, the fan running. And I can already see that. Yeah, so we're down to 25 now, which is kind of fine. That's where we want it to be. Now, apart from shutting the curtains or the blinds, none of that affects the room. And that's the real problem. If the room's hot, the tank's going to get hot. So one more thing to try, which isn't necessarily a fish tank cooling thing, but it will make a It'll make a little bit of a difference. So as fish keepers we generally have access to this sort of thing. This is a poly box that fish come in or you collect in or post in or whatever it might be. And what I've done to this one is I have cut two holes in the top. So I have a square hole here and a circular hole there. And most fish keepers have access to PVC pipe so I've taken a length of pipe with an elbow on it, cut a hole in the the top and that goes down to just half an inch an inch off the bottom and in this square here put that for a second you 
remember the fan from earlier on? What we do is we take the output side of the fan and we put that over the square hole and you've got yourself a makeshift air conditioner. All you have to do now is take some of those frozen water bottles, stick them inside your bucket, a load of ice cubes and bags or something like that. The fan then blows the water down there, it has to go through the ice in the water bottles, get to the bottom of the PVC pipe and up and out and that produces nice cool air. So let's do that. So we simply fill this up with cool bottles, cool packs, empty freezer packs, bags of frozen peas, anything you want really that's cold. In this case, because I'm not very prepared, ice cubes. And what you want to do is just make sure that the pipe is going below the ice so the air that you're going to force in through here has to go through the ice to come back up and come out of here. And then it should be a case of pop that on there, press go, cold air comes out of here and you've got yourself a DIY air conditioner. So I'm going to put that over there like we did with the other one. Whew. And that kind of works on the same principle, you could rig that up to point that more down onto the water and you'd be blowing cooler air down there which would make it evaporate even faster. But the benefit of this one is, even if it doesn't cool the fish tank, it cools the room a little bit. I was really quite sceptical when I saw this on YouTube on how to build a DIY air conditioner. But I've been running it for the last couple of days now and it's brilliant. Nice, nice cool breeze coming out of there. So even if it doesn't help you with your fish tanks, it might make your life a little bit easier, especially if you're a, a larger chappy like myself. If I had hair, it would be flowing in the cool breeze right now. But this will bring the temperature of the room down a little bit. Um, it won't work in a big room unless you get some kind of industrial sized fan and massive amounts of ice and stuff like that. But in a little room like this, absolutely perfect. They're not the most scientific of experiments or tests but I thought I'd just run through all the things that people tend to suggest so let me know if they've been any use to you or if you've got any more that you think I should try out myself and like I say I think my favourites are to get the ice bottles in there early, bring it down that couple of degrees and then just get a fan blowing on the top that tends to keep things under control. Um, I think we're at yep, 36 degrees outside now and the tank itself I think we were at 24 uh, the tank we've got down to 24 degrees now. Which is pretty good. So, like I say, if you haven't clicked that subscribe button, it really helps me out. And I'll see you next time. Let me know what you think in the comments. Bye!